Hi, I'm Diane Rogers, Sid and Diane's. And today I want to show you how to make some linguine and fresh clam sauce. This idea was spurred on by my cousin Gina. Sid agrees wholeheartedly. We used to chow down on this stuff like, wow, boatloads. Anyway, but let's start by first talking about the clam. All right, I've got some fresh clams. And what I've done so far is I've left them in the net and I've rinsed them under cold water. You know, when you bring these home from the grocery store, they're probably gonna pack them in ice for you, especially depending on where you are location. If you're in the south hot, hopefully they are putting them on some ice. But what you wanna do for sure is don't let them drown in that water. And you wanna open the plastic bag up and let them breathe. That's why they're packed in nets. And so then I take them in the net and rinse them well. But the object of this clam thing is to not juggle them around and don't go beating them up. You, want, you don't want the muscle to contract. By having the muscle contract, especially if you like them raw, because usually what I do is when I buy the clams, um, usually a half dozen to a dozen go in the mouth raw and then the rest I cook up for clam sauce. I love them raw anyway. But if you start juggling them up and moving them around, that muscle that is right here on the clam is gonna contract so tight, it's really challenging to open either with a clam knife, which is not an oyster knife, it's a clam knife, edge on one side as opposed to a pointed blade, or it's gonna just take them a little longer in the pan to open up when you steam them. Um, but anyway, so these are little necks. There's a lot of different clams you can buy. You can buy cherry stones, which usually um, do, are, they are the clam that goes into uh, uh, clam sauce. Little necks can go both ways, either raw or into clam sauce. But the cherry stones, I don't really like eating them raw because they're too big and they get too tough. So anyway, little necks are good. Then there's steamers. I love steamers. And steamers, in my opinion, should be eaten. It's a soft shell clam that's more uh, oval, like a mussel shell, but white, like clam. But they're the soft shell. They have a little neck that sticks out. And you steam them. And then you dip them in their broth to rinse the sand off them. And then you dip them in butter, squeeze a lemon and you eat, oh my God, they're heaven, but they're really tough to find. Anyway, so back to this little neck clam. So you want to rinse the sand off, and the reason you want to rinse the sand off is because once these open in the pot, I want to use all the liquid. But you know how you get a spinach salad sometimes and it's still got grit on it? Well, now they're all triple washed, but used to be if you didn't wash spinach really well, or if you grow it in your garden and don't wash it well, you get the grit in there, and there's nothing worse than eating sand unless you're on a beach having a picnic or you get washed up in the ocean. But anyway, this is so not the case because we're cooking. So rinse them off. And then what we're going to do is carefully and gently put them into the pan. I think what I'm gonna do is lower them this way. And I did have a little bit of juice left that I'm going to dump right in that pan. And what I can do is very gently since I put a nice big slit in the net, is to gently lift the net up. Now I'm using a pan that again is on the shallow side. If you use one that's too deep, then again you have, like mussels, you have a problem bringing up the bottom, except these shells are so much heavier than a mussel shell, bringing up the bottom to the top and then the top sinking to the bottom so that you get an even cook on them. So the most shallow, uh, deepest pan. Now this is five pounds of mussels. It'll serve really, you know, maybe three, four people. Um, well, I have to admit, I did take about six or eight of them to eat raw, but before that it was five pounds of mussels. And if you're curious, the back of the label that's attached to the net will tell you all about the clam and where they were harvested, the date, they'll give you a sell-by date. Anyway, it's always good to have that information, product of the USA. I love East Coast clams. But anyway, here the clams are in the pot. Get that little bit of net out of there. 
And then what I'm going to do is take these over to the stove. I'm going to put them on high heat covered. So in just a minute, join me over at the stove and I'll show, show you how it goes over there. You know, before I go to the stove, I should speak about the ingredients too. Um, clam sauce is really easy to make, but it's good to have the ingredients already prepped so it's a matter of heating them up and, it, you know, dump and serve, just heat and serve, whatever. So you want some fresh cut, chopped garlic, of which you need a couple tablespoons. I always like to keep some chopped ready to go in the refrigerator, so I always chop extra. But it's best to store it in a glass container so that the plastic doesn't pick up the garlic. And whenever, however you do it, um, whether you buy garlic cloves that are already peeled and then you mince them up. I like mincing these in the little uh, chopper grinder attachment that comes with the immersion blenders. It's fast and easy. And as opposed to doing it on the wooden cutting board, so that if I'm making pie dough or any kind of pastry, dessert-like stuff, dessert items and cutting butter on a cutting board won't pick up that garlic. But anyway, so I always leave some also in reserve, uh, whole peeled garlic cloves that I can use for garlic toast or for slicing thin, but I really like these, and especially for this type of situation, linguine clam sauce, a salad, and some garlic toast. Oh my God, it's heaven. But you want the whole garlic clove for that, so you can rub it over the toast. You need some fresh lemons, I've got those cut in half, and fresh chopped parsley, of which I have Italian flat leaf parsley, I love Italian flat leaf parsley, especially for cooking because it's so much more pungent than the curly parsley. And so, um, yeah, it's great parsley. It just has a lot more flavor. A uh, trick to cutting parsley is uh, if you're not adept with a knife. Okay, if you're going to cook with the parsley, what you can do, and this is sort of a nice little shortcut, is put the parsley bunch, stem and all, into the freezer on a sheet tray, but you have to work quick once it comes out of the freezer. After you pull it out of the freezer, it will crumble like shattered glass. Works like a charm, especially with cilantro and dill. I learned that when I was doing food processing. Um, all my herbs used to come in IQF, which stands for individually quick frozen, and it would all come in finely chopped, so I thought, oh, why don't I try this? I tried it, it just works so easy. But anyway, this is fresh chopped. I did not put it in the freezer. Um, and the stems, of course, I stay for stock. And then the lemon. We need a little bit of olive oil, butter that I already have over by the stove, a little bit of salt, fresh ground pepper, some white wine that you drink with. Don't use inferior cooking wine per se. And then you also need either Grana Padano, which is an excellent cheese. Actually, it's Parmesan Reggiano, but just not aged quite as long, or Parmesan Reggiano. That's going to go on the very top, or not. A lot of people don't mix seafood and cheese. I think it's great. I just love it. So anyway, yeah, a few simple ingredients and linguine and clam sauce. So anyway, okay, now I'll take these over to the stove and show you how to cook up the clams, chop them, and make the sauce. All right, here we are at the stove. So here's what we're going to do. The clams are in the pot. I'm not adding any water, no nothing. I'm going to turn the heat on high and I'm going to put the lid over these. All right, so I have mussels in the pot. No liquid. They're going to make their own liquid. High heat, covered, and I just have to keep an eye on them. They smell heavenly. They smell just like the ocean. And you do want to keep them, uh, keep an eye on them because as soon as they start to open up, you want to pull them out. And they're not going to all open up at the same time. So, won't be long. And they're actually starting to open up a little bit. Getting them to relax a little bit first by keeping them in the refrigerator and then not jostling them around also steps this process up. So, we'll come back to these in another couple minutes and see how they're doing. All right, so, ooh, these are looking good. They're smelling good, and they have come up to the boil, and oh my God, look at all this liquid, and they are starting to open. So 
now, and as I move these around in the pot, uh, they tend to open up more. So now I am going to, so I don't fry myself, turn this down a little bit, pull the opened ones out to the bowl, leave the unopened ones in the pot for just a couple more minutes. I like this type of a utensil to pull them out with or a slotted spoon so that we're leaving the liquid in the bottom of the pan because we need that for the sauce. Very important. You've got to have that for the sauce. One thing that if they've been in for a while in the pot with boiling for a while and they don't open up, sometimes they might need a little nudge. That's probably because they got jostled around a bit. All right, for instance, this one doesn't look like it's open, but really it is done and open. I can tell how much it is. He just needs a little bit of coaxing. And I can either do that with my clam knife or with this, and yep, it's perfect. So anyway, so they're all coming out. Now, while I get the rest of this together, I'm gonna turn the heat off because I don't wanna boil that clam juice down to nothing. I need that. So what I'm gonna do is take these over and I'm going to separate the clam from the shell. Now, I'll probably hold about maybe six or eight of them back so that when I put them on a platter, I have a few shells to put around the platter to garnish with and it makes it look just a little prettier. But 95% uh, of them are gonna get a slight chop on them to go back in the pot. So I'll do that and show you how that goes and I'll be right back. They probably have to cool a little bit unless you've got asbestos hands like myself um, to pull them out. Actually, I can show you right here what I'm gonna do with these. I will put them into this pot all right, so what's going to happen is the clam is coming out. I'm going to put that in the bowl. And the shell, I'm just going to put aside for a little bit. But, yep, these come out really easy. Sometimes you'll find that they might just shake right out. And if there's any juice in the shell, make sure that you pour the juice into the bowl that'll end up in the pot. Have to have that. So anyway, I'll just do that and then be right back. The clams just pop right out. They're cooked perfectly. The reason for pulling them out of the pot as soon as they open up is so that they don't overcook and then turn really hard and tough. That'll make for some really nasty clam sauce. Now, as you can see, that was five pounds, really about four and a half pounds of clams. It really doesn't amount to all that much. Most of the weight is in the shell. So, and you want to make sure that you do buy those fresh. And you really don't have all that much juice. So that's why I say you really need to save what you have. There's only maybe, oh, three quarters of a cup in the bottom. So what I'm going to do, now I'm going to put the heat on. Now we're going to make the sauce. I'm going to pour the juice from the clams that I just steamed in the bottom. Pull that out. All right, so we're going to put the clams aside for right now. Now, to this juice that I have just saved, we are going to add some butter. And this is going to be about, oh, a good third to half a stick or two-ish, you know, one and a half, two-ish ounces of butter. And we're also going to add just a splash of extra virgin olive oil. I want the flavor. And then we're going to add a couple, you know, a good solid heavy tablespoon of fresh chopped garlic, right? And then, actually, this is a butter-based sauce, so don't get too alarmed, but you sort of need it. I'm going to add just a little bit more. So it could be about three ounces of butter that's going to go in that. And then we are going to add the juice from one lemon if it's nice and juicy, two if it's not so juicy. 
we're going to taste this after I get done with it because these lemons, they did have quite a bit of juice in them. Um, the thicker, larger uh, uh, lemons, thicker skinned, I should say, larger lemons, sometimes don't have all that much juice in them. Those look pretty good though, so we'll see where that's going. Then we want to throw in a nice splash of white wine, which would be half a glass, you know, half a glass that you would drink. So what, two to three ounces, something like that. And then we're going to boil this. And I'll just stir it up really well. And we're going to reduce this sauce, shall we say, now by about a third. Then after that, we'll taste adjust it and see where it's going. I have the linguine already cooked, which is a very interesting thing. My sister asked me yesterday, well, just how do you cook pasta? And I said, well, Sid, I guess I've been doing this for so long that I just, uh, take it, I, I just take it for granted that of course everyone knows how. Well, the first thing you should do is take a look at the box of pasta, whatever the shape is, and see what the cooking suggestions, the timing actually is because the thinner the pasta, such as angel hair, the faster it's going to cook. Fresh pasta cooks like lightning speed. Drop it in the water, it floats and pull it out. Um, this is linguine, Checo linguine. The cook time is about eight to 10 minutes. I pull it out a little earlier because I want to warm that pasta in this sauce so it will cook again, but that pasta is gonna absorb more of the flavor. But anyway, so back to the pasta. The rule of thumb is a gallon of water per pound of pasta with about three quarters to a tablespoon of salt. Yes, the salt will dissolve and the pasta will pick up that flavor of the salted water and the salt, it should taste like the ocean. And you drop it into boiling water. Make sure that water is to a hard boil. And then when you drop it, kind of drop it, if it's linguine or spaghetti or something long, fettuccine, whatever, twist it a little bit so that it's not falling on top of each other so it won't stick. And there's no need for oil, you don't have to do that. Then after it's in the pot, keep an eye on it because the first minute or two, you want to make sure all that pasta gets submerged into the water and then you stir it up so that the strands loosen from each other and you don't end up with pasta that you end up having to peel apart, which is really, and then it's half of it's not cooked properly. So anyway, um, and then cook it, you know, like a minute or two shy of whatever the package instructions are. And then you'll come up with something al dente. It's wonderful because you don't want pasta mushy, but you don't want it to the tooth either. I mean, so hard that it's got a crunch to it. That's nasty. So anyway, um, and then cook it and drain it. And the way you're going to cook it, or after you drain it, there's two ways that I do that. If I'm not going to use it, like for instance, I cook this in advance. Now, if I didn't want to put this together until tomorrow, then I would oil that pasta just ever so slightly. Extra virgin olive oil, of course, because I want the flavor. And then refrigerate it. Um, I'm also going to stop the cooking by running it under cold water. But if I'm going to use it right away, then what I will do is drain it. And if it's going to be used instantly, then I'll just save a couple tablespoons of the pasta liquid to add to the sauce and then put the pasta in right away if it's a nice fast sauce like that. If I'm going to use it within just a couple minutes, I'll just drain it completely and I won't necessarily rinse it because I want it to stay hot because I'm going to use it hot. So anyway, those are a couple quick tips on how to cook pasta, but overcooking I think is the biggest mistake. Now let's take a look at this sauce. How do I know when it's done? Well, how do I know when it's done? I'll turn this so I don't burn myself. Well, nope, I guess I have to leave that on. All right. I know that it's done because it's foaming, or it's, it's, it, it's looking like a foam on the top. And not necessarily has it thickened because it's still thin, but it doesn't look as watery as it did before. And so I can tell by the edge of the pan that this has, you know, it coats the bottom of the pan nicely. It looks really good. So what I'm going to do is now I am going to turn this off. I am going to add some fresh cracked pepper. And I am going to add 
I like a lot of pepper. Great stuff. White pepper, really white sauce, but I like fresh cracks, so that's up to you. Julia Child would say, of course, white pepper is the way to go. And if you do use white pepper, cut back on that a little bit because white pepper is a bit more pungent than fresh cracked black. So we're going to do that. I'm going to add some fresh chopped parsley to this. We are going to stir this around and we are going to taste it. And darn, you know, I think that's about right. So I am going to, you want this a little bit more pungent because the pasta doesn't have a lot of flavor to it. So I'm going to go get the pasta. We'll add it to that and then warm the pasta in this sauce before I add any of these clams that are going to get a coarse chop on them. Uh, and the reason these are going in with the pasta after it's warmed is because I don't want these to cook anymore. I still want a nice tender clam. So anyway, I'll be back in a moment with the pasta. All right, so I'm back with the clams that I took over on my board and just coarsely shop them. You can see that these aren't really small. They're not tiny, tiny. They're probably like, you know, quarter inch, something like that. Just a little chop. Unfortunately, I didn't save any for the shells because I wanted them for the top. And then we're gonna put this heat back on high again and into the pot is going to go the pasta that I've cooked some good linguine and as this warms up I'm going to warm the noodles as I call them in the sauce now, if you want to do this for a bunch of people, say you're doing this for six or eight people, here's what I would do. I would toss the noodles into the pot and give them a quick toss, then put them in a casserole like something. Um, whatever you could, like an oven to table, longer oval type round bowl, whatever, to the shallow side is good. And I wouldn't warm this all that long in here because what you can do is cover it and then rewarm it in the oven. However, I would not put the clams on until the very last minute if you're going to rewarm them in the oven. Rewarms really well, but you just have to be careful of when you're putting the clams on. So, anyway, now this. The noodles are coated really well. You know, a lot of people, when you go to a ta Italian, I guess, Italian as some say, restaurants, and they serve you a bowl of noodles with the sauce just plopped over the top and they don't mix the sauce. That is so not what I've been brought up on. The sauce should always be mixed with the noodle and then put either on the plate, plot, or whatever. So you get a nice even coating. But anyway, and this does take a little bit of fresh chopped parsley because that a lot of flavor is actually coming from the parsley too, believe it or not. So if you can see what this looks like in here, we've got the pasta warm. It's got a nice coating of the butter and olive oil. Now if anything, I'm going to drizzle to finish this just a tiny, tiny bit of extra virgin olive oil over the top because it adds, it's good extra virgin olive oil and it adds a little, it's quite a bit of flavor actually. And then I'm going to toss into this only about half of these clams so that it gets a nice mix in with the noodles and of course all the juice. The rest of these I'm going to save for the top of the platter or in my case the plate so that there's a nice little pile of clams on top. So anyway, that is basically how you do it. I'll take this over and show you how I would plate it. Okay, so now it's time to plate this luscious dish. This came out really good, by the way. All right, so what I've got is the linguine that's been tossed really well with the butter sauce and olive oil sauce and a few of the clams and you can see that they're very nicely dispersed but I held some back. So now we're going to 
put some onto the warmed plate. Whenever you serve this, you want to put this onto a warm plate. Whether you run them under hot water for a minute, put them in the oven on a very low to no heat just to warm them through. If you put this type of a butter olive oil sauce onto a cold plate, it'll chill up, it'll be gross. You really don't want to eat it like that. So anyway, on it goes to the nicely warmed plate. And of course, to finish it, me and my pepper, I've got to have a little bit of fresh cracked pepper. And then I am going to add a spoonful of the clams that I held back. If I were to put this on a platter, I would use the rest of these on the top of the platter. But I'm probably going to make another plate for Sydney who just came in and brought me this nice pretty little apron that I'm wearing. So I'll make her plate with some clams on top. And then I'm going to add just a little bit, whoops, no, not that yet. I'm going to add some fresh grated cheese, uh, whether that is Parmesan Reggiano or Grana Padano, either one works really good. And you don't need all that much. And then we're going to put a little fresh chopped parsley on that. How's that for pretty? And then how about this and some garlic toast? All right, so I didn't have any French bread, but what I did have was some really good sourdough. So the garlic cloves that I held back from earlier, here's the whole garlic clove. I put this in the toaster because it was fast and easy, but you could put this in a grill pan, you could put it in a saute pan, under the broiler, however you want to get it toasted. Then when it's nicely toasted, take your whole garlic clove, rub this over the top, and you'd be surprised how this eats up the garlic. I just used half a garlic clove, but it's really good. And make sure you go edge all the way around it. Then what we're going to do is take that and we're going to drizzle this with a little extra virgin olive oil. Now this is why I like the liquor pour so much or some kind of a fine pour is because you can drizzle really nice without absolutely drenching it. Then this is going to get just an itsy bitsy tiny bit of uh, good kosher salt, fleur de sel, some kind of really nice salt. And then I am going to cut that on the diagonal. And voila, whoops, you can clean that up. Voila, how does that look for a wonderful dinner? Add a salad, green beans, sauteed green beans with a little um, lemon and extra virgin olive oil over the top of this would be really good. So should I try? Of course, I've got to try everything because I'm the cook, right? And Chloe's down by my side. She loves spaghetti and clam sauce, linguine and clam, whatever. She loves Mama's cooking. So let's give this a whirl. Yep. Whoop. Fork, spoon, twirl. Yum. Wow. Wow. I've got to say that that is some pretty good stuff and I'm going to finish it down the hatch with a nice little glass of white wine, the same wine that I cooked with. Oh, that's really good. Oh, what a lovely combination that is. I always say drink what you like. I might be a little heavy with this. This just happens to be an Edna Valley, Edna Valley Chardonnay. I'm sure there's other better compliments, but that's really good with that. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed. So until the next episode, Diane here. Thanks for joining me.